So we are going to focus now on limiting reagent and we will calculate the percent E and the percent E is calculated using the formula given over there actual E divided by the theoretical E times 100. So we'll go ahead and do some questions on limiting reagent. So before we start doing the actual question, let's understand what a limiting reagent is. It is that reactant that gets used up first in a reaction or uh, and an excess reagent is the one that that is present in a quantity greater than what is needed to react with the limiting agent. For example, consider the reaction hydrogen plus oxygen giving you water and always balance the reaction. Once you balance the reaction, you realize that I need two moles of hydrogen to react with one mole of oxygen to give you two moles of water. Or in other words, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen moles is two is to one. So let's consider some cases. When you have two moles of hydrogen and two moles of oxygen, I just need to one mole of oxygen to react with two moles of hydrogen and hence hydrogen is the limiting agent and I have oxygen as excess. And the second example, when I have three moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. So uh, looking at the equation, we know that for every three mole of hydrogen, I will need half of oxygen that is 1.5 mole of oxygen is needed. I have only one mole and hence oxygen is the limiting agent in this case and hydrogen will be present in excess. Okay, one more case, when I have equal moles of hydrogen and oxygen, one mole, one mole, and uh, as you know that the amount of hydrogen pr uh, present should be twice that of oxygen and I don't have enough and hence hydrogen is the limiting agent in the third case and oxygen is present in excess amount. The last one is seven moles of hydrogen and three moles of oxygen so the amount of hydrogen has to be twice, I do have it, but the amount of oxygen has to be half of that of hydrogen. So in this case, I should have 3.5 moles of oxygen, but I have only 3 and hence oxygen will be the limiting agent and hydrogen will be left over. So let's uh, now make it into uh, proper steps and see what you need to know to calculate the limiting agent. The first one is write a balanced chemical equation. Then find the limiting agent. And the third step is use the mass of limiting agent to calculate the theoretical yield. Then the last one is from the given actual mass calculate the percentage yield using the formula given over there. So for any question given to you follow these steps you will be able to handle the question pretty well. Now I'm going further and doing some actual questions. So we have to find out the grams of chlorine that can be prepared from 22 grams of MnO2 that reacts with HCl to give manganese chloride. All the products are given. We have asked you to calculate the percentage yield also. So the first step you do will be to write a balanced chemical equation. So looking at the reactants and the products given, you can see that manganese dioxide. MnO2 reacts with HCl, MnO2 plus HCl, giving you manganese 2 chloride. The formula of manganese 2 chloride will be MnCl2 plus chlorine plus water. Write it down and then balance the equation. And putting a 4 in front of HCl balances the whole equation. And the next step we have to do is finding the limiting agent. So, in order to do the limiting agent, you are given two uh, values there, 22 grams of MnO2 and uh, 38 grams of HCl. So what I will do is, I will always take the first reactant given. It's no hard and fast rule. You can take any reactant. Take one of the reactants. Since MnO2 is given first, I am taking the grams of MnO2 and finding how much HCl I need to react with that. So this will give me an idea of the limiting agent. So if you want to start with HCl, you can go ahead and do it. But throughout in this video, I'm going to do only the first reactant given to calculate the limiting agent. So I will take up 22.0 gram of MnO2 and find out how much grams of HCl is uh, needed to react completely with that. 
So write down uh, 22.0 grams MnO2. Then convert the grams to mole using the molar mass of MnO2. And after that, use the equation over there. And in the equation, you see that for every one mole of MnO2, I get four moles of HCl. And then convert the moles of HCl to grams of HCl. And the answer I get is 36.90 grams. So to react completely with 22.0 grams of MnO2, I need 36.90 grams. How much I have? Look at the question. I have 38 grams of HCl. So I have HCl in excess. So enough HCl is present to react with 22. So if I go back and um, analyze the values given, since I have enough HCl, the other reagent is the limiting agent. And in this case, MnO2 is the limiting agent. So if you didn't understand this, just go back, look at the numbers. And before we proceed further, get into your uh, head, how did I calculate the limiting agent? Okay, let's continue with it. I just did uh, two steps there. I found the limiting agent. Now, I will use the mass of the limiting agent uh, to calculate the theoretical yield. So, um, the theoretical yield will how much of uh, uh, chlorine will be formed. So, uh, with the limiting agent was manganese dioxide. And with that, if I calculate, I get that amount of chlorine form should be equal to 17.94 grams. How did I calculate it? I converted the mole grams of manganese dioxide to moles. Then from the equation, I converted into moles of chlorine. And from that, I got the grams of chlorine. Now, the theoretical yield is 17.94. The actual yield given is 13.50. And hence, the percentage yield can be calculated. One more question, 8 moles of sodium chloride reacts with 3 moles of sulfurous acid and it gives me 195 grams of hydrochloric acid and sodium sulfide. Calculate the percentage yield of HCl produced. As always, write a balanced equation first and this way you should know how to write the formula of each one of the reactant and the product given over there. Balance it, then find the limiting agent. As I said, I will... Uh, start with one of them. So in this case also, I am starting with the moles of sodium chloride and finding how much moles of sulfurous acid I need. And uh, since everything is in moles here, I don't have to convert it into grams. And um, I get for 8 moles of sodium chloride, I need 4 moles of H2SO3. Uh, that's quite obvious also from the equation. The ratio is 2 is to 1. So and how much I have? I have only 3 moles of sulfurous acid. So I don't have enough. And hence, H2SO3 is the limiting agent. Now, step 3 was, I used the mass of limiting agent to calculate the theoretical yield. And uh, theoretical yield is the formation of hydrochloric acid. And here, since hydrochloric acid is in uh, grams, I will take up the moles of sulfurous acid and convert it into moles of hydrochloric acid using the equation and the moles of hydrochloric acid is then converted into grams of hydrochloric acid and the theoretical yield is 218.76 grams so now to calculate the percentage yield uh, the actual mass given is 195 divided by the theoretical yield multiplied by 100 to get the percentage yield 58 grams of magnesium reacts with 34 grams of oxygen and forms magnesium oxide. Here the question is different. They are asking you to find the excess reagent that is left behind. So as always, write a balanced chemical equation first. And uh, magnesium reacts with oxygen to give you magnesium oxide. And then the next step is find the limiting agent. Because since they are asking about the excess reagent, we have to know which is the limiting agent. And calculating the limiting agent, they, with 58 grams of magnesium, the amount of oxygen I need is 38.19 grams. 
and how much of oxygen I have? I have only 34.0 grams of oxygen and hence oxygen is the limiting agent. So if oxygen is the limiting agent, magnesium should be left behind. So in order to calculate how much of magnesium is left behind, <coughs> we have to find out the grams of magnesium that will react completely with 34.0 grams of oxygen. So that's what I'm doing now. I will take the 34 grams of oxygen and convert it into moles of oxygen using the molar mass. And from the moles of oxygen and using the equation, I convert it into moles of magnesium. And from the moles of magnesium are then converted into mass of magnesium. And I get the answer as 51.64 grams. So, in order to react completely with 34 grams of oxygen, I need only 51.64 grams of magnesium. How much I have? 58. Therefore, I can easily calculate the amount of magnesium that is left over. That's 58 minus 51.64. That's 6.4 grams. Calculate the grams of iron and oxygen that will react together to produce 128 grams of iron 3 oxide and with no reactant left behind. This is a different question. So let's see. First we will write the equation and uh, iron reacts with oxygen and rea gives me Fe2O3 and balance the equation. So what are they asking? They need to know how much of iron and oxygen will uh, need it to get exactly 128 grams of Fe2O3. So what can I do? I will start with 128 grams of Fe2O3 and calculate how much of iron is needed to produce that. So start with 128 grams of Fe2O3, convert it into moles of Fe2O3 using the molar mass and then using the equation convert the moles of Fe2O3 to moles of iron Fe. Then once you have the moles of Fe, convert that into grams of Fe and that comes as 89.53 grams. So what do I get is, I need 89.53 grams of Fe to produce 128.0 grams of Fe2O3. Similarly, do it for oxygen also. Using the same uh, equations, convert first grams of Fe2O3 to moles and then convert that into moles of oxygen and then to grams of oxygen. So this is a question in which they have not asked for percentage yield or limiting agent. A product is given and they are asking how much of the reactant we have to use and uh, we don't want any excess reactant left behind. So one more different kind of question. Calculate the grams of aluminum and oxygen that reacts to produce 85.8% yield. So they are telling you, they are not giving you how much of it is formed but they are saying that uh, I have only 85.8% of yield. So as always, Start with writing the equation first. Aluminum plus oxygen giving you aluminum oxide. And in since the reaction, uh, the question says I have only 85.8% yield, I should know what is the value for 100% yield. My equation will help me to calculate that. From the equation, uh, find out how much grams of aluminum oxide will be formed. So, 2 moles of aluminum oxide. Uh, is uh, what I need and one mole of aluminum oxide has a molar mass of 101.96 grams and hence the mass of aluminum oxide formed will be 203.92 grams. So this is the theoretical yield. So if 100% of aluminum oxide is formed, I should have had 203.92 grams. But since I have only 85.8% yield, Calculate the mass for 85.8% E. That will be the actual grams of aluminum oxide. And that comes as 174.96 grams. So once you know what is the mass I need, I can calculate the grams. It's just like the previous question. Calculate the grams of aluminum and oxygen as shown over there.